So what would you like me to do? Change of base. Hmm. I can change some bases. So I have logs and they're both awkward looking, right? Um, they're different bases for starters. That's kind of a clue to you that like, they don't talk the same language, just like fractions that don't have common denominators. You gotta do something about that. So therefore, how do I use change of base law? I can write that this guy over here is two times what? How would I write it? Log x on log five. Does it matter what log base I choose? No, it really can't be anything, which is kind of handy, right? So I've separated out these guys into logs with the same base. That's useful. And I don't even care what base it is, as long as it's the same one, okay? I can do the same thing for this guy. What's this gonna become? Yeah, it's just upside down because the base and the, um, it's called the argument, we have hardly ever used that word. Uh, it's because they're in different places, they're swapped around. So there's my nine log five on log X, and there's that three hanging out there on the right hand side, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. Now, at this point, I'm almost at the quadratic step because this is actually exactly what I talked about before, fractions with different dominators, gross. So how do I get rid of them? What will I do to both sides? Nothing moves, nothing moves. What will I do? What operation can I do to both sides? I can, yeah, very good. If I multiply by the product, well, really it's the lowest common multiple, but in this case, that's the product, of these two denominators, then all of my fractions will disappear. And they'll just turn to normal terms. So log x log five will do it, right? What's it turn this guy into? Well, when you multiply by the log five, the denominator is cancelled out, but you've also multiplied by log x. So this becomes this. I have seen people use like in, in trig notation, <coughs> excuse me, we write sine squared x to indicate sine x all squared, but uh, it's not so common with logs, so I'm just gonna write it in long form so we know exactly what we're talking about. What's left over? Minus nine. Yeah, the same thing has happened over here, right? The log x that we multiply by cancelled on the bottom, the log five we multiply by, now you've got two of them on the top. And then over here, you've got the whole kitten caboodle. Are you happy? So we have satisfactorily created the quadratic. Now at this point, I have a lot of logs flying around, and just for the sake of making this easier to work with, I'm just gonna introduce the substitution. I'm gonna say let u equal log x, and that just saves me having to write log x over and over again, okay? While I'm at it, on my next line, I'm also gonna get everything over on one side, so it's a nice and easy to work with quadratic, okay? So what will I get? I've got two u squared over here on the left. That's gonna be the u term right there, so it, it, it goes next in order, right? I'll subtract it from both sides, which gives me this. I put some brackets there. Why do you think that's a good idea? Not necessary, but a good idea. Yeah, number one, it separates out the u, so I can see this is the coefficient that I'm after. Secondly, is it log of 5u, or is it log of 5 and then something else on the end? And it's just not worth being ambiguous about that. And then you've got this guy hanging out over the end here. Now, admittedly, this looks messy, but remember, log 5 is just a number. It's just a number. So I can deal with it like any other number, like 3, or 8, or pi, or e, it's fine, okay? This is a quadratic, right? Can you see a nice easy factorization for it? When you say evaluate it, evaluate what? Log five. Yeah, so, so this can be whatever base you like. Okay, so you can do that. However, I'm gonna point out, while that's fine, um, you have to be careful because for other kinds of problems that are more complicated and will demand you to actually choose a specific log, um, you don't want to do just anything. So that's why I'd say watch out. We can actually deal with this and it's probably worth flexing our algebraic muscles a little bit as it is, right? As it is. Um, if for example, all I have to do is change the five into a pronomial and then you're kind of stuck, right? So how can we deal with this without evaluating things? What do you do when you can't factorize a quadratic? You go to the, you just go to the formula. I've got a formula for this. U is going to be equal to, take a deep breath, minus B, which is, it's just three log 
5 because there's a double negative. Plus or minus the square root of b squared, which in this case is b squared, b squared. I think it's going to be 9 log 5 all squared. Is that my b squared? Minus 4 a, and then here comes c. Whoop, no, I didn't end already. There we go. Before we go any further, does it check out? Does it look all right? Did I do my substitution correctly? B squared minus 4a, check it. C, check it. Look good, yeah? All over what? 2a, which in this case is 4. Cool. Now, this looks disastrous, but I'm expecting a lot of stuff will cancel out here, right? So I've got my 3 log 5 hanging out the front. Plus or minus, OK, look carefully. How many log 5 squares do I have? Um, I've got nine of them here. And then how many do I have here? Eight times nine. Eight times nine is 72, right? So I've got nine of them here, and I've got plus 72 of them there. That looks to me like 81 of them, yeah? That's, um. Convenient, OK? So this is looking good. This is looking, it's giving us all the cues that we're on the right track. This is divided through by 4. Uh, let's have a look. This is 3 log 5 plus or minus. How many log 5s am I going to have? Nine. Nine of them. All divided through by 4. Uh, this is two solutions, isn't it? Uh, there's the negative one, which is minus, minus 6 log 5 on the top. Minus 6 log 5, that'll be minus 3 on 2 log 5. You okay with that? And then your other one, your positive solution will be how many log 5s? 12 of them divided by 4. So it's just 3. OK, now I've just solved for you. But what was you again? It's log x equals. So I'm almost there. I'm like one step away. Uh, for example, it's a bit easier to see on, say, this one, right? 3 log 5, you can write that without the 3 at the front, can't you? What would that be? Log, log of 125, right? So log x equals log 125. So clearly, x must be 125, like that. Uh, this one's a bit of a messier sort of proposition, but it's 5 to the power of whatever that is. 5 to the power of minus 3 on 2. Uh, 5 to the power of minus 3 on 2. Uh, I think that's going to be, oh, help me out, guys. I'm actually, you know what? I'm just going to write that, and then I'll deal with it later. <laughs> OK, I've, do, I've done the hard work, haven't I? Um, what is this question about? This question is about, number one, it is about your log laws, because I've used it quite a few times. And secondly, it's about seeing the quadratic, like seeing the forest for the trees. Yeah. Uh, root 1 on 125. Yeah, yeah, w yeah, which is the same thing. And either of those are one on, one on the square root of 125. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Because that's 5 cubed, and then the square root's the half.